Hello, students. This is Mrs. Marty, and I'm going to go over a brief slideshow. This is more of a refresher for those of you that are familiar with argumentative essay. I know that all of you have had practice um, in the past. Um, we began writing FSA in third grade, and so this should be a refresher. And then I'll also upload one that is more detailed as well. So if you need to go back and listen to it, you can. First of all, what exactly is an argument? Well, an argument involves the process of establishing a claim and then proving it with the use of logical reasoning. And logical reasoning is that rhetorical appeal we call logos. So that might be examples, research, expert testimony, facts. Um, this is not an opinion as you, when you wanna prove it, you wanna make sure you're using that logical reasoning. Okay, and the purpose is to present well-reasoned conclusions about a topic in order to persuade or convince the audience to accept or at least to seriously consider, consider your point of view. And this is the difference between argumentative and informative is you're not giving them um, factual information on something that is proven, you're presenting a more debatable or questionable topic, but giving them your side of it and trying to say, this is why you should agree with me without writing the words, you should agree with me. You just simply present them with what you believe are facts and conclusions. And hopefully by the end, you've convinced them to agree or at least consider your point of view. So um, there's an aim or a goal when writing argumentative essays. One is to convince or persuade the reader. Two is to attempt to change the reader's mind about a topic and convince the reader to agree with the point of view of the writer, which would be you. Okay, and some terms to learn, or I guess these should be refresher terms, and this is something you can go back to and um, you may want to take notes so you have it with you all the time. Um, and the first one is just what is argumentation? Okay, this is forming reasons, drawing conclusions, and then applying them to a case and discussion. Okay, so in this point, an essay. We have your pro arguments. So these are the arguments you're going to use in order to try to convince someone that your point is correct and that supports your ideas. And then you have your counter argument. And these are the cons or the reasons that the opposition may use to say that your point is not valid and they don't agree with you. You have your refutation, which is very important. It comes after the counter argument. And this is the process where you disprove the counter argument or the opposing argument. Okay. You have the opponent, which is the person who you assume disagrees with something and who would speak against it and that would be in the counter argument. And then you have the proponent, which is someone who argues in favor of something. In this case, in an essay, that would be you. So you as the proponent are presenting the pro arguments to agree with you. And then in the essay, you will acknowledge that there are some opponents that would disagree for certain reasons, but then before the end of your essay, you come back with this rebuttal or refutation and say, although these opponents believe this, you give them reasons why the opponent's arguments are not as valid as yours. And that's all there is there to the argument to the essay. Some elements. Say you're going to have your argument or your, your claim, which if we were talking about an explanatory or informative essay, this is where we call your thesis. This is your main point. So your argument states your claim. This is um, 
and it, then it's supported with reasons and evidence from the sources. In this case, sources are provided for you on the FSA. Um, when you get to SAT, ACT writing, college writing, those sources are not going to be given to you. You're going to have to research those sources. So you're going to argue your side, the pro side, um, and so that makes you the proponent. Then you have the counter argument or the counter claim. So if you have a claim and you say that e-school is the best way to learn, then there's going to be someone with a counterclaim that says face-to-face -face learning is the best way for students to learn. So you've got to be able to talk about and recognize both sides of an argument. And this is what I just said. The counterclaim argument stands in opposition. So the counterclaim side is your opponent's side. They're trying to explain why you are wrong and then you're going to try to explain why you're correct. So this says how to write it. Choose a topic and the writing the and writing the thesis statement um, on the FSA. Your topic or your prompt and resources will be given to you. So you don't have to choose it. You will just need to choose a side. Um, in this case where the, it's given to you, you're going to read the prompt carefully, scan through the sources, maybe make a pro con t chart for the prompt and then choose a side and this is a little tricky because sometimes you're given a prompt that you personally feel strongly about one side or the other but maybe your resources do not support that side so i always suggest that you make a claim or an argument the pro side for what you have the most sources or resources for. So, for example, if you believe that e-learning is the best way for students to learn this year, but most of the resources says that is not, then you're going to have a difficult time presenting an argument based on those resources. So you're probably going to want to make that pro-con chart and make sure that you have enough for whichever side you're choosing, pro for the argument, con against the argument, before you write your thesis. Then you're going to write to your thesis statement and um, just freestorm generate some ideas. So your resources are going to give you some ideas, but um, you always want to put your own ideas in there with it. So you'll use the facts and reasoning for your argument and then generate some ideas about those ideas or arguments that are your own. So when you're supporting your argument, you want to strengthen it. In order to do this, you're going to base it on sound evidence, which is logos. That's what those of you who read or watched the videos and remember from previous years, logos, ethos, pathos, or pathos, as we call it sometimes. Um, but to strengthen it, you really want to provide sound evidence from your resources. So usually what you provide is elaboration, your side of it. That, that's where the um, ethos and the pathos are going to come in, meaning I know about this because, being the ethos side, or using uh, something that's going to play on someone's feelings to get them to agree with you, which is the pathos of the pathos side. So logos or the logic that you're going to include in your argument could be facts and this could be data from the resources that are given to you, okay, that they have been proven generally accepted. Okay? And those are things that you're generally going to find in the sources and you're going to make sure you cite those sources in your argument of paper such as you know, as source one states, give it a quote or paraphrase it, right? And then you use your information, um, the appeals to their feelings and why they should believe you, the ethos and pathos part to provide elaboration and explanations. You can use examples, okay? And you can also provide support for uh, from a 
an authority. So if in your resources that are provided for you, and we're talking about e-learning versus face-to-face -face learning, there is expert testimony from people who have degrees in education or have researched the topic, then that would be a support from authority. And then there are also opinions of experts. So you might use teachers, principals, those types of things. Um, the role that your audience plays in your paper is generally very important. In the case of writing for the FSA, you know who your audience is. Your audience is a group of educated adults who are looking to see what you know and how you can write on the topic, okay? Um, so it says here, the second bullet, an argument is an implicit dialogue or an exchange with your audience. So in writing arguments, you will assume there is a reader that will not agree with you. you when writing, you can never assume that the reader knows about your topic. You have to provide enough information on your topic for someone who may not know much about it. And you also have to present your point of view in argumentative writing to assume that someone is going to disagree with you. So you're trying to be very persuasive here. This is a sample outline for argumentative writing that will probably come in very handy if you're not, don't consider yourself a great writer or you're not very familiar with argumentative writing. Um, this is an outline here and I have included this outline in a PDF document in Schoology under Argumentative Essay, so that if you want to print it out, you can. Um, if not, you're going to want to probably, while you're writing an argumentative essay on a sheet of paper, write an outline that looks something like this. So it tells you in, intro in your introduction what you need to include, which is your hook, and that's where you can put a two to three sentence like story background. You can provide examples. You can ask a thought provoking question. You're going to explain the issue again, assuming someone's going to disagree with you or maybe someone doesn't know much about it. And then you'll have your thesis or your claim, your position. And you're going to take one position or the other. You can't say that both are correct because you're not going to convince anyone of your side if you're saying, you agree with both, right? So your argument has to be strong. Your second paragraph is your first pro argument. So you'll state what that argument is. And if we're still talking about e-learning versus face-to-face -face learning, this would be your first reason, okay? The first proof you're gonna provide as to why you believe e-learning is the best way. You're going to explain why you believe that way and then provide evidence or analysis from your resources. And the explanation and evidence doesn't necessarily have to be this way. You can provide evidence first and then you can explain it. OK, but these in your within your paragraph, you should have an argument, an explanation with evidence. OK, and then this third body paragraph, which is your second pro argument, you will present a second point, a second reason why your thesis, your claim, your position on the argument is correct. And then you have argument three, um, which is optional. So if you wanted to write a six paragraph essay, you have, um, let's say, three good arguments, but not a lot of information on any of them. So they're going to be three shorter paragraphs graphs as far as your pro argument, that's when you would want to include that optional um, third argument. Otherwise, you would probably just go with the five paragraph essay being the introduction, your argument one for your um, paper, your argument two for your paper, and then skip down to the refutation or the counterclaim. So this is where you're going to state what the opposing side 
may say, what proof did you find in your reading that was against? So that's where this pro con chart um, while you're reading comes in really handy because you already have the opposing arguments on a chart. Um, you'll give the explanation for the opposing argument and then the refutation. That's where you come back and say, you know, although many oppose because of whatever your reason is, um, e-learning is still the best way to learn because, and then you prove while they're, why you believe they're wrong and you're right. Then you have your conclusion and where you're going to restate that thesis in a new way, maybe call to attention and give your reader something to think about. So some useful sentences that you may find helpful in the counterclaim or the rebuttal paragraph is yes, and then you state whatever the opposing side would say, and you say but, and then you would put what your point or your argument is. Um, also, you could say, although I agree up to a point with the opposing side, I still insist, and then you present your side. You could say, I agree with, so it's okay to agree in your counter conclusion with part of what the opposition says, but I cannot agree that blank, and you say what you don't agree with. And you can say someone is right, but they claim this and that's wrong, or I agree this because in my experience this confirms so these are just some sample sentences if you have a hard time with that counterclaim and rebuttal to help you set that up in a way that will make your argument stronger and in conclusion you want to have a point to your argument so that means you make your own decisions about it uh, you identify your audience um, in this case, you know, that may or may not be um, the way you want to go, but if you are going to identify your audience, um, you can just address them as so anyone can now see because you don't really know who's reading it, but you know someone is reading it. So I would use a more general term like anyone or everyone or all of something like that. You're going to um, explain what the counter argument was. So you'll restate that again in a different way and then, you know, respond. What was your rebuttal and then show